Hello and welcome everybody, it is your boy King Demps up in this bitch And we are back at it again with the scores on the doors This time for the RMRB I already did the RMRA, go and watch that video Let's get straight into things Sangal, they're getting a C, whatever Sprout, they're getting a C, whatever Expected both of those two to bottom feed And they have Entropic, they're getting an F Because this was bad for Entropic They should be doing better than this And... I'm getting to the point where it feels like they have to make a roster move because they've just stagnated so hard since the end of last year and haven't been able to get over that hump. But what do I know? Maybe with more time, they can. Uh, ASG, they get a C, whatever. Expect them to do nothing. Endpoint get a C, expected them to do nothing. I'm going to give Sinners... <sighs> okay, we're not supposed to dwell too much on Sinners. So they're just going to get a C-. minus. I would have expected them to be a bit more competitive than maybe they were anonimo get a c plus they did quite well actually and were com more competitive than i thought they would be and heat heat are actually going to get a b minus because they played really well they were better than i thought they were going to be in the end what held them back the reliable firepower was what i expected to hold them back because afro and joko are like their two best players and afro in particular kind of was not consistent enough he didn't find himself and his form often enough but yeah, that's those lot. B minus and C's, whatever. Now we get to the business end of things with Spirit. Spirit, I think, deserve an immense amount of credit. They are a very young side, obviously, with Patsy and... Who's the other fucker? What's his name? What's your name, boy? Siren. Yeah, I thought that was it. I wanted to say... um the other guy that they trialed who they sent back down to the to the but whatever spirit did very very well with a young squad and they deserve an immense amount of credit i think i need to give some credit particularly to chopper who i lament as not being the best in-game leader however he's done incredibly well with a young group of players here if we take a look at their run you could argue that they got quite a nice 3-2 run. They only had to play Ents, who were a really good team. That was the only really good team they had to play. They spanked ASG, got spanked by Sinners, and it's not looking too great after that. I think the real series that was very impressive was the Anonimo series, because Anonimo had shown themselves to be actually a very competitive team throughout this qualifier. Uh, and Spirit, in like a very tight series, they managed to take Vertigo the full 30 they put up a decent fire mirage. It was just that T side was fucking woeful and just cost them any chance of like making it more competitive. But then a massive T side, look at that. 13 T rounds on nuke. That is impressive. And it was actually a pretty cool formula for success. Everyone, Patsy through Dexter, Siren, Ma Ma Magics, the <laughs> All of them performed very well at their own points and had some good returns in particular series. And if we go here and we just take another look at the stats in general for Spirit, um, we can have a look and see who the big boys were. And Dexter was the big carry, but look, behind here, Siren and Magic's both putting up decent numbers. Patsy overall, it was like whatever, but he had particular maps and series where he was very good. Um, and yeah, we just look at the opening attempts. Actually, the reason Patsy's struggling a lot is because he's basically throwing himself out there and dying a lot, which CIS teams sometimes lack for. They lack for somebody who's willing to do that. So, but look at the success rates here, like 66, 62, very high success rates on their three star players. So it's looking really pretty decent for Spirit. And I am pretty impressed with how they have been playing in this RMR. I was not expecting much from them i expect them to be a decent upset team but they ended up making it and i think they have to get like a b because they exceeded expectations i didn't expect them to qualify the reason i'm not giving them like an a or, or something more is because the route they had for qualification was not bad it was kind to them i would say the draw so yeah they get a b well done spirit um looking forward to seeing how this team will grow and develop another young squad from the cis region that does really well similarly to forza in the other rmr so yeah bloody hell man that region that region is deep in terms of talent next up we have the kosovan bad boys in bad news eagles and yeah they had a very difficult draw to start things out they had entropic in the first round one of the tougher draws 
did really well to win that in overtime were competitive both against nip and g2 which was maybe a surprise to some people but actually if you've been watching tier 2 you know that these guys previously under the blink name have actually been doing pretty well for themselves and making a bit of a name for themselves and then come the best of threes they had two pretty simple i'll be honest draws and they got the job done the Sinners game is obviously the key one and they did very well here to win a close Inferno at the end. It could have gone either way. I feel for Sinners because my heart has a bit of a soft spot for them. Um, they were part of the first LAN I attended, V4 Future Sports, and they were just kind of coming up in the scene when I first started working for HLTV. So I was covering them a decent amount and um, yeah, Bad News Eagles did very well throughout this qualifier honestly if we go and look at the stats they're another team i want to just check the stats uh out for because i think it's it's pretty interesting um they're actually one who like look like one flat true and um juan what is it juan flat true juan flat true or is it one one flat true i don't know one i'm gonna go with juan flat true because that's how it should be said phonetically yeah him and synopsy fucking i digress man they're the two like star players but it's it's pretty evenly distributed and depending on the game like we saw a series the one in, against sinners gxx was actually the top fragger so uh, and if we go to openings it's kind of like all over the place like fucking synopsy takes a wild amount of openings and is pretty successful but like you know, there's a wild amount taken by Regon, and like, yeah, it's it's a bit all over the place with Bad News Eagles. There's no like super clear defined star player, and there's it's not like some it's not like the traditional structure you might expect with a team because they're Orpa. So their Orpa is GXX, and he's nowhere near their star player. Like this was his stats for the event. Obviously, low number of deaths, which is good for an AWPA. But yeah, he he's their AWPA, and he is by no means their star player. So, like this is that's just a, a way to show you as an example the Bad News Eagles are not the traditional structure of team. Let's say, but they were great to watch. They are great to watch, and they're a very passionate and inspiring team. So that obviously all works in their favor the narrative is amazing a kosovan team they had like some difficulties and some disagreements with their org and without that org backing they've come here and qualified for the major fantastic story go and read the hltv i'll link it down in the description uh lucas did a fantastic piece with them just detailing their rise and they really are a team that have kind of like come from the dirt as it were they you know have struggled with land cafe environments and all this kind of stuff just go and read it it's it's cool shit and uh yeah well done bad news eagles you're gonna get a b, 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 b a b from me it was a good showing next up we have da boys from astralis and they are actually gonna get a b plus now you might look at that run and think eh why are they getting a b plus they be asg and a best of one yeah who cares they be ensign a best of one okay fair enough ensign looking pretty good at the moment and on overpass which is a map ensign very good on so that that is respectable but you're like oh they lost to players they lost to g2 and they beat heat in a best of three like what you know that's probably about what's expected why why the b plus why a good score i will tell you why i pay attention this player series, very, very close. Could have gone either way. I mean, yeah, obviously they lost Inferno pretty convincingly. But it was basically just that T-half on Inferno that Astralis were bad. For the rest of that series, they were competitive. They looked pretty good. And you're playing against the players where Axile is going absolutely bananas. If Axile's doing this to you, 100 ADR, 70 threat, like, that's a fucking hard to beat players, all right? Well, Cloud9 now. God bless America. Then this G2 series also close. Look at it, man. It goes all the way to OT on Vertigua. It goes all the way. Shit map. Still. I'm sorry. I have to say it. Shit map. Fucking hate that map. And look, Farley's fucking bragging. He's, he's going ham. The, the Orpa, the fucking problem position that you couldn't fix for so long. You have one that's doing really well. So obviously, you understand my point. It was very close against players in G2 who are two of like those sort of top five-ish teams in the world. So Astralis looking really competitive against the best of the best. Not quite there. Understandable. And then they put Heat to bed. This series was like 
quite close actually he had a lead on ancient that they could have maybe closed the game out on and he also were in a good spot on nuke that they maybe could have run the game to finish on and i think he will be very disappointed to be honest i think they definitely had chances and this last series was so close that if we go down here afro man we can't have that of afro we th this if afro just has a better and more consistent series he probably go through and they'll be really disappointed but fuck it we're talking about astralis here they did the business they did what needed to be done and they look pretty good doing it config was was banging a lot of the time farley was having good games and good series and obviously blame f is blame f he's always going to get his numbers it's just the way blame f is actually this astralis is starting to come together their biggest problem at the moment is still their T sides occasionally. They have a really good ancient T side. They will sometimes just fucking disappear on the T side of other maps. If they can lock those T sides down, and I think a lot of it is is still figuring out how best to play around Blame F, because I think when you have Blame F on your team, your T side has to revolve a lot around him because he is going to play quite selfishly in general on the T side. But if you can play around that Blame F play on the T side, he is going to get mad frags. He is going to win T sides for you. So, you know, I think once they figure out and really nail down how the rest of them have to play around Blame F on the T side, then I think we see a dangerous Astralis. I think hum the major this Astralis team will be competitive and they will be dangerous. How deep they can go in the major, I don't know, but they get a B plus from me here. They performed well, looked good, had a tough draw, still made it through. Well played Astralis. Uh, and shout out to Farley. Ah, you're progressing into a good player. Keep going. Next up, we have the boys in G2 and they're just going to get a C. They did what needed to be done weren't super convincing in doing it the loss to anonimo on mirage is disappointing but anonimo proved to be a pretty decent and handy team actually at this qualifier and could have very easily made it through beat sangal which they should and that game was honestly closer than they would have liked um they were not great in the first half and in the end the class and the golf in quality between the two teams did start to show but Sangal actually made it pretty competitive playing with a stand-in. Sangal had their coach standing in at this point. So, yeah, G2 will be disappointed with that. Put Bad News Eagles to bed wasn't too distressing of a series, and Bad News Eagles are a decent team. And then they just kind of squeaked past Astralis in this best of three. It wasn't super convincing from G2, but they got the job done. They did what they needed to do, so you can't really complain. I think the reason they get to see is because the expectations were to qualify. They qualified. They didn't have a tough draw, and they still dropped the best of one to Anonimo. And the Astralis series was not mega convincing. They squeaked past Astralis there. So, yeah, it, it, I don't know, man. I'm not convinced with how good this G2 are going to be. Although, having said that, I do think they're always going to be a team that will be at their best in the high-stakes moments. I think that's when their players will step up. People like Nico, people like Monacy are probably going to step up the most when it matters the most. So, yeah, a C for this RMR wasn't that great, but looking forward, I think G2 will be better come the major. Next up is Ents, and they are also going to get a C. They beat what was put in front of them. They beat who you would expect them to beat, and in the end, their draw wasn't too tough. They only had to play Astralis. That was in a best of one, and they actually lost it. So not bad for men's you know they they did what they needed to do they beat who they needed to be uh but there wasn't anyone too tough that they ended up playing the anonymo series on the first map it was quite close to 69 it was actually pretty close some of these rounds in the second half um could have gone either way uh, and anonymo were really good on mirage throughout the event so i think anonymo will be disappointed that they didn't make this a little bit closer and maybe if their individuals had been a little bit more on they could have However, you can't knock Ents. They beat what was put in front of them. They beat it as you would expect. A C, I think, is fine. You know, they just they just had no chance to get a better grade, really, because they didn't play anyone that great. Uh, and then they obviously lost the tiebreaker, but who really gives a shit if they made the major? You know, a legend spot would have been nice, but it it's fine. It's who cares, really? Oh, so it, it's a C, by the way. I know I've already said it, but just so that everyone's aware, they get a C. Next up, we've got Nip with Brolan, and they are going to get a C as well. You know, um, 
No, oh, go on. They can have a plus. They can have a plus for grabbing the legend spot. They get a C plus. They beat you. They should be beating. This was a fucking like piece of piss draw, really, for Nips, Sinners, Bad News Eagles, and Endpoint. They're, they're going to beat all those teams. Lost 2-0 to Copenhagen Flames. And honestly, Copenhagen Flames are just a better team. Copenhagen Flames were so good this qualifier. So whatever. They can have a C plus because they beat Ents in the Legends spot. I think they'll need to figure themselves out, Nip, with uh, S-Attack, obviously, on the AWP. S-Attack was actually looking okay. He looked not too bad on the AWP in general. I don't think he's ever going to be like a mega explosive, oh my god, it's simple type player, but he was more proficient than I thought. He was pretty reliable at hitting the shots he should hit, and if he can do that, that's all he really needs to do on this team. If you've got Brolan and Rez popping heads and being two of the best riflers in the world... S attack can just like, you know, just fucking stick him up on an angle. He just needs to get his one and fall back. Like, that's all you need from S attack as an AWPA. So, C plus. Still need some time, obviously, this nip with this five to like figure it all out. Uh, but yeah, you know, it was good. Fair play. Well done. Legend spot. It's a good day at the office. Next up, we got players. And uh, yeah, they get a C plus as well. Um,. You know, the fact that they went through 3-0, the fact that they just beat whoever's put in front of them, pretty comfortable against Sangal and Anonimo. The series against Astralis was kind of tight up until that T side uh, that Astralis just didn't fucking put together at all on Inferno. Um, so in the end, it was kind of comfortable for players. They they beat everybody that they needed to. They beat them all pretty comfortably. No stress, no dramas. Axar was playing out of his fucking mind this RMR. Had like a 1.5 rating, highest impact, highest everything. That man was balling out of control. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's fucking nice. Good work, players. They get they get the what did I what did I just give them C plus? They didn't play anyone better, so I can't give them much more than a C plus. So we'll just give them a C plus. Le Copenhagen Flames. Copenhagen Flames get an A. Uh, they played really fucking well. They beat everybody. They were clearly the better team against Nip. 3 0 it. Comfortable as fuck. Get themselves a fucking legend spot. Absolutely amazing return for Flames. And it's so good to see them succeed in this way. Yeah, by the way, Yabby and Nikodos were fucking huge. Yabby, that kid is the truth. I am fucking telling you, that kid is so good. I know he isn't always the clear star for Flames, but he's a fucking good player, and he will be on an Astralis or a Heroic in the future, I reckon. Yabby, remember the fucking name. And yeah, it, anyway, going back to my previous point, fucking lost my train of thought there. It's great to see Flames succeeding after... You know, the success last year with IEM Fall and making it to the major and just being so competitive and showing basically that they were of tier one quality, easy peasy. And then not getting the move to complexity, not getting the move to a bigger org, having to go back to slogging it out in that tier two online circuit. It's got to be tough for the motivation and it's got to be difficult to continue getting yourself up for each game and the grind in the same way that you did before when it it kind of feels like you did your time grinding the tier two with this lineup and then you know you should have really gotten that move to a bigger org gotten that move to like a louvre agreement team or or whatever unfortunately the limited resources that they have with their current org means they're probably no matter how good they get with this team, they're always going to have to go through qualifiers and such because basically their org can't buy their way into into Blast or um, the ESL circuit. But it's just good to see that Flames, when the major cycle comes around, um, maybe this is the model they can have as a team is just, you know, look to peak for that major cycle every time and, and just that's how, you know, you grow yourselves as a team. That's how even you can grow the org and, and maybe help the org to grow with you as a team. Because if Flames keep making majors and who knows if Flames can, you know, go deep in a major this time, then you can do a lot for your organization. Um, you know, that's how you build winning orgs is you, you build winning teams, you build successful teams, and then, you know, you build brands on top of that. And um, it's great to see this, just this team do so well. Um like I say, every time the major cycle comes around at the moment, they seem to get the business done. And yeah, really looking forward to seeing them at the major because they were so good here. They brush nip aside. Yeah, just looking at an amazing team and thumbs up again. I've done a lot of thumbs up in this video. More. More thumbs up. 
that is it from me guys you know the drill you like it you leave a little comment we have a little chat or maybe a cup of tea and if you did not like it no tea for you no biscuits all my custard creams are my own